Yes. Uh, I, I could hear some noise actually. Yes. Yes. Okay. I think now it is not coming. Yes. Good morning, sir. Uh, now I will I invite all participants to the second session. So again we have the same session special electrical motor selection for the electrical vehicles now i thank to raghavan sir for his guest lecture okay raghavan sir we can start your presentation sir. yeah fine fine sir one moment sir kindly yeah. do not log in with other email ids because i am getting uh, admit every time so if you have any other email id what uh, i don't added in the guest guest person so kindly do not log in with that ids thank you sir is it thank you sir. okay fine fine okay. can you mute uh, microphone yes sir ah fine Okay. Uh, good morning to all of you. Um, I request you to enable the video. Yesterday, a uh, few persons said there are some issues with the camera. Otherwise, it is boring. Okay, it looks like I'm talking to the screen. So it is better if you uh, enable the video. Right? I'll not disturb you. Okay, that assurance I give. Is my voice uh, uh, comfortable? Yes, sir. You are uh, yes, sir. Great, great. So you can do like this. You can do like this. Um, uh, so we started with uh, uh, electronically commutated motor. There are uh, two machines. One is a trapezoidal vacuum of motor, and second is a sinusoidal uh, vacuum of motor. In trapezoidal vacuum of motor, at any time, dash number of windings are energized. Dash number of windings. Please fill up the blank. Okay, two windings. Okay, uh, already people are responding. Fine, two windings are energized. So when uh, two windings are energized, so the resultant uh, MMF is armature MMF. Now we are trying to, we are aiming for the angle between this field MMF and armature MMF as uh, 90 degree. Since the field MMF is continuously rotating and armature MMF is stationary for uh, time period by 6 at the uh, armature MMF is pointing in space for a time of uh, the electrical time period divided by 6 okay so therefore it is not possible to get uh, this angle between field MMF and armature MMF as constant 90 degree so we will have to go for uh, kind of uh, in between so initially uh, the angle between the field MMF and armature MMF, you can look at the uh, diagram one, okay. So that is 120 degree. Now this armature MMF vector will be in this position till this field MMF advances by another 60 degree, 120 degree to 60 degree. So when the angle between field MMF and armature MMF becomes 60 degree, then what we do, we will advance the armature MMF armature MMF in the forward direction such that once again the angle between the field MMF and armature MMF becomes dash. Sir, Anji? please repeat the question. Okay, okay. So now uh, you see the diagram one, the field MMF and armature MMF, the angle between them is 120 degree. Okay, this armature MMF will be at this position for some time. What time? Now you have to convert all the time into angles. Let's say that the rotor is rotating in the clockwise direction. Therefore, the angle between the field MMF and armature MMF with the time dash decreases or increases? Decreases. Decreases. Great. Okay, now we will energize phase A and phase C up to what angle so now the angle between the field mmf and armature mmf keeps on uh, decreasing okay so once the angle is 60 degree 
then what we do we again advance the armature mmf by another 60 degrees such that the angle between the field mmf and armature mmf again becomes 120 degree is that understood so fa is fa is stationary for certain time till the angle between field mmf and armature mmf becomes 60 degree till that time the fa will be uh, due to phase c and phase c once the angle comes down because the torque produced is proportional to sin of the angle between the it's sin 60 it is coming down then we will advance fa by another 60 degree once again the figure 2 figure 2 this is the initial instant when the windings b and c are energized the angle between ff and the resultant fa f subscript small a that angle is 120 degree we will energize b and c like this till the field mmf advances and the angle between ff and fa become 60 degree so the the first figure first figure is the initial instant of energizing a and c and it will be like this but the field mmf will be rotating so i have to do a kind of animation here the angle gets reduced once the angle becomes 60 degree then the second state will go second state in the sense the windings b and ener c are energized such that fa will be pointing minus 90 degree do you follow what i am saying right then after 60 degree then the third state fourth state fifth sixth and so on then the same thing gets repeated so now um if you look at armature mmf armature mmf is a kind of making dash movement it is not making continuous movement in space it is making dash movement could you please fill up step wise movement yes discrete movement so armature mmf is making discrete movement not making a continuous movement do you follow what i am saying yes okay so uh, ff is making continuous movement armature mmf is making discrete movement why armature mmf is making discrete movement because we are energizing the windings uh, by switching on to transistors and uh, those windings carry constant current either plus i or minus i because we are energizing this by quasi square wave form why quasi square wave form because the back emf is trapezoidal back emf and we are interested in getting a continuous constant power with the time once you get constant power with the time then the torque is also going to be constant with the time once the torque is constant with the time there is not going to be torque ripple if there is torque ripple no vibration no noise etc all right so kind of uh, summary is given you can uh, read it uh, नवीन कुमार okay is it done great any doubt on this okay with this trapezoidal back em of motor you please tell me are we able to mimic dc motor performance two options i give you no yes no sir okay uh, shivam I, what is your doubt sir as you said the armature uh, mmf will be making a discrete movement so won't it introduce uh, the torque ripple in the machine torque ripple will be there that is the question no now i am asking the question are we able to mimic dc motor performance shivam yes sir yeah see we have a target and we are trying our best right so 
we are we are approaching that's all we are so the question is if if we are getting the same performance similar to dc motor then we can conclude yes we are not able to maintain we are not able to maintain an angle of 90 degree if you maintain an axis it's not about 90 degree it can be 60 degree it can be 80 degree right so all the yes. time can you maintain same angle okay since the field mmf is continuously moving and we are energizing two windings by constant current so the resultant armature mmf space vector will be pointing in one direction uh, so sometime the angle is say for example 120 degree but the angle is not going to be 120 degree all the time although sin 120 is less than sin 90 but all the time it is not sin 120 because field mmf is not stationary so it is continuously moving so the angle reduces so when angle reduces 110 degree again sin 110 is less than sin 90 sin 100 sin 90 sin 90 you will get maximum value of torque so basically if i sketch the torque wave form torque increases from certain value to goes to a peak corresponding to sin 90 degree then again sin 80 value comes down sin 70 sin 60 so up to 120 to 60 it is actually 60 degree so 360 by 60 6 so one set of windings are energized now you have remaining five set so the 360 degree is to be taken care now you are going for the second uh, set of windings second set of windings will include one of the winding in the previous conduction so basically uh, we ensure that every time uh, only one winding is energized this is to reduce the switching losses because if there is a too many transition then the switching losses will be more this you know in power electronic converter so every time we ensure the whatever winding that was conducting earlier the same winding will be conducting and plus one more winding because you have to cover the next 60 degree so if you sketch the torque wave form sin 120 to sin 60 it varies so obviously there will be a variation from minimum maximum and again minimum this is about 1/6th of a cycle electrical cycle okay so the the conclusion is Uh, we want to imitate dc motor because we are upset with the dc motor we are upset with the dc motor for what because of navin kumar navin kumar today he doesn't want to show his face <laughs> okay okay if you are uncomfortable on sunday it's fine no no sir okay so um, uh, we are upset with the dc motor in what aspect uh, losses commutation commutation yes we the yeah because of commutator okay uh, because of commutator there occurs spark why there occurs spark uh, there is a shift in the magnetic neutral axis with uh, uh, armature due to armature reaction all that you know but simply i am touching that topic okay now we are going for uh, um, sinusoidal vacuum of motor sinusoidal vacuum of motor i should not have shown this uh, don't see this now you tell me the analogous statements for sinusoidal vacuum of motor in sinusoidal vacuum of motor what do you want to do Hello. Sinusoidal current. Uh, why you want to inject sinusoidal current? Uh, to make power constant. <laughs> Harmonics are less in sinusoid. Huh? Power Harmonics power. are less in sinusoid. Hmm. Anything else? to make torque and power constant nahi see whatever we discussed uh, in line with the trapezoidal vacuum of motor basically something i have written here i am showing here can you say in line with this can you show can you say in line with whatever i have written one important thing what you said about armature mmf in the trapezoidal vacuum of motor it makes dash movement 
discrete moment here discrete moment so in line with that can you say something in sinusoid it may make continuous movement great so our most continuous moment yeah we wish to have continuous movement of armature mm to by having continuous movement of armature mm of vector what is the advantage that you are gaining Sir, ripples can be reduced sir ripples yes, are not there we make the angle between the field mmf and armature mmf we can make it 90 degree once you make it 90 degree once the field mmf is moving armature mmf is also moving so we can say that the armature mmf and the field mmf relatively they are they can be made as stationary do you follow what i am saying both are moving but by, by by making the angle between them as 90 degree you can ensure that all the time you are getting the same amount of torque sin 90 proportional to sin 90 so it is going to be constant is that okay yes, yes sir great great so uh, uh, you have to write you have to write corresponding uh, statements for example so the title will be sinusoidal vacuum of motor field mmf is moving in space continuously so what will be the first point can anybody say first point for sinusoidal vacuum of motor f a is placed dash degree ahead of f f f a is placed 90 degree ahead of the field winding great not field winding you say field mmf because field mmf field mmf yes yes f a is placed 90 degree ahead of f s okay next what is the next statement han ji does it remain stationary till f f advances by 60 degree Okay, is it confusing? Armature MMF and field MMF are stationary with respect to each other. No, no, no. Sina, what I am asking, can you make analogous statements for the sinusoidal vacuum motor quickly? Right? If A is placed ninety degree ahead of F F, then it doesn't remain stationary. Okay, it's also moving. Okay, if F F is making one degree, F A will also make one degree. If F F is making 10 degree movement in the forward direction, F A is also moving 10 degree. So I am saying you have to write analogous statements. Now come to the next point. During this time, okay, all the three phases are energized, okay, and they will not carry constant current. They carry sinusoidal current. All the windings are carrying sinusoidal current. Okay. So during one electrical cycle, there is no discrete movement. It is a continuous movement of F A. for uh, so since you should know what is the exact position of the rotor and uh, rotor field mmf so all sensor will not meet our requirement so we have to go to we have to go for optical encoder very accurate position sensing is needed so you can read these statements it is like analogous uh, to that hello sir why optical encoder is required ah okay instead so, of all sensor yeah all sensor will not give accurate position sensing we want to know if the field mmf is if the rotor is advancing by 120 degree no kindly record the session who is recording i cannot record i suppose rajan sir i forgot sir Sorry, sorry for interrupt. You forgot. So should I start from beginning? Okay, sir, I will start from the analogy, sir. No, no. I will, I will, I will take uh, uh, two minutes. Okay. Yes, sir. So, <sighs> thank you, sir. Good morning. Like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Okay. At uh, in trapezoidal vacuum of motor, at any time two windings are energized. The windings are energized uh, uh, quasi-square waveform. 
so the resultant MMF is making an angle of 120 degree with the field MMF, right? And the resultant MMF is stationary at this position till the field MMF advances by another 60 degree. Once the angle between field MMF and armature MMF becomes 60 degree, once again, we have to advance the MMF by another 60 degree. So that uh, initial position of advancing the armature MMF by another 60 degree for which uh, the windings B and C are energized and it is shown in the figure 2. So like this, the entire 360 degree is being uh, shared by these six distinct states. So field MMF is continuously moving. Uh, once the field MMF is approaching the armature MMF, the angle gets reduced. The angle between field MMF and armature MMF gets reduced. Then once again, we are shifting the armature MMF uh, advanced. Once again, field MMF is trying to chase the armature MMF. Again, armature MMF is advanced. So, uh, field MMF is moving in space continuously, whereas the armature MMF uh, remains stationary at a position for about t by 6 time where t represents the electrical time period so during one electrical cycle there is a uh, an occurrence of six discrete step movement of armature mmf since the angle between the field mmf and armature mmf is not constant the torque produced by the interaction of field mmf and armature mmf is also not constant so as a result of which we will have uh, torque ripple so therefore this trapezoidal vacuum of motor is unable to mimic the dc motor performance in dc motor we have the angle between field mmf and armature mmf is always constant and it is equal to 90 degree whereas here it is not possible okay so here we, to give the quasi square waveform for uh, every winding we should know the initial uh, position of uh, that uh, field MMF uh, movement. Therefore, very accurate position sensing is not needed. If you can figure out by what the back MMF uh, uh, crosses zero, right? So after that, some 30 degree ahead, you have to energize the winding. So approximately, if you can find out the position, so that is enough. So all sensor does the job of uh, sensing the rotor position. Now, if you go for uh, next uh, class of motor, sinusoidal vacuum of motor, in this case, all the three windings are energized. Once the, all the three windings are, whenever we have a three-phase winding and it is energized by balanced three-phase supply, then we know that there is a traveling magnetic field is created. Traveling magnetic field means what? There is a continuous movement of the magnetic field. So we are making use of that uh, principle here. Since the field MMF is continuously moving in space, so we are looking for a magnetic field which can move continuously in space. So for that purpose, we require three windings to be energized by three-phase supply, right? So, uh, and in addition to that, what we are doing, uh, every time we ensure that the armature MMF is ahead of field MMF by 90 degree because our objective, our target is to mimic the DC motor performance. Once FF advances, field MMF advances by 5 degree, for example, then armature MMF should also be advanced by 5 degrees. So every time we ensure that the angle between field MMF and armature MMF is 90 degree. So if the field MMF moves by 1 degree, we have to move armature MMF by 1 degree. So accurate position sensing is needed. All sensor cannot do the job. So we have to go for optical encoder, some encoder. So encoders are expensive. Uh, so that is why many people, they work on sensorless control. But I strongly advise the uh, PG students and of course UG students, initially work with the position sensor. Don't go for sensorless control because we are interested in high performance drive. We are not interested Actually, truly speaking, we are not interested in eliminating the sensor. We are interested in maintaining the angle as 90 degree. We are interested in getting the torque per ampere to be maximum. And we are interested in ensuring that the torque is not having ripples so that there is no vibration. So the big job, the, the, the main objective should be in that direction. Main objective should not be eliminating sensor. But unfortunately, in the academics environment, many people 
focus on eliminating the sensor okay so when we talk about a very high performance drive let's talk about a, a four wheeler okay so for four wheeler this 10000 15000 doesn't matter at all actually okay even for a two wheeler uh, for a two wheeler currently we go for a trapezoidal vacuum of motor uh, because this will add a cost to that but if you can get uh, smooth movement and if you can get the torque as maximum we can have a better mileage when i say mileage mileage means what for every charging how much kilometer you travel right so the focus should be on that uh, at the end we can think of sensorless control why sensorless control because uh, uh, most of the methods are connected with based on estimating the position sensing uh, by vacuum of but the vacuum up will not be there at the time of uh, starting okay so when you are traveling and you are applying brake and once again the drive has to start from zero so during that uh, transient time during that starting time uh, you will not be able to energize right set of windings when you are not energizing the right set of windings you will energize and the motor will rotate okay uh, so but uh, it's not it it doesn't correspond to the best performance it is because we have eliminated the position sensor so it will be good we get better performance and uh, we are happy about the control and the control is very robust maybe at the end you can think of eliminating sensor all right any question here streamer no sir okay great okay now you please respond to the questions first question is is it possible to obtain variable dc current from a battery for a given winding i will take a winding that winding will be connected to battery whether we will get a constant variable current okay how do you get variable current nay uh, yes yeah, I, i mean everybody has said yes how do you get va variable dc current sometimes i want current yes by chopping chopping okay dc to dc converter by switching the inverter accordingly okay uh, dc current i am looking for variable dc current so it will be good if you say kind of a chopper all right okay now next question is it possible to obtain variable sinusoidal current why we want variable dc current in case of uh, trapezoidal vacuum of motor we want to do quasi square wave form therefore i am asking variable dc current in case of sinusoidal vacuum of motor we have to inject sinusoidal current starting from a battery second question please great okay now yes yes now we will go to that okay great thanks thanks all of you have responded all of you know uh, with the fixed dc voltage how do vary dc current in a coil uh, so what we are doing uh, we are closing the switch once we close the switch uh, the what will be the current in the winding right now i am not choosing the vacuum of just i am taking a winding okay just to explain so what will be the current in the winding steady state current it will be equal to v by r correct v by r so in what time it will reach v by r in what time it will reach v by r five times the time constant time constant is l by r all right okay now we want to change the current because torque is equal to k phi i where flux comes out of the magnetic field and uh, now we want to maintain the current we don't want the current to be decided by the resistance of the winding we want to decide the current so let's say that uh, uh, i want 10 ampere whatever i show ih ih corresponds to 10.1 let's say 10.1 il corresponds to 9.9 once the current reaches 10.1 ampere i will open the switch once the switch is opened this diode is forward biased then the current starts flowing through the diode resistor and inductor so because of the inherent resistance of the winding uh, that uh, energy will decay the energy decays in the sense current will decrease 
so current is decreasing so till that time the switch is kept in the open position once the current touches the value of 9.9 .9 ampere once again the switch the transistor is closed so again the current starts from 9.9 .9 and it is increasing now the current flows from starting from the supply the semiconductor device resistor and inductor like this right so current touches 10.1 so and again switch is open now the diode resistor inductor current touches 9.9 .9. so this is called hysteresis band current control okay uh, uh, <clears throat> We define the band as 0.2 ampere, okay, that window, 9.9 .9 to 10.1 ampere. We can still reduce also like 9.95 to 10.05. When you reduce, what happens then the semiconductor devices will be subjected to eye switching frequency. So you will have to see uh, whether that much accurate DC current is needed or you are okay with the 0.2 ampere band or 1 ampere band, it is actually left to the user actually, right? So, uh, so once you have this uh, variation in the current, then you will have variation in the torque produced also because we have to inject 10 ampere. Instead of injecting 10 point, sorry, 10 ampere, we are injecting a current of 9.9. .9. We are injecting and it's varying from 9.9 .9 to 10.1 but uh, we should understand that inductance is a kind of a shock uh, absorber okay uh, that means whenever there is a fluctuation in the current inductance is going to suppress that fluctuation and similarly finally we are interested in torque mechanical side so then you have the huge moment of inertia mass so that is also going to suppress the fluctuation so uh, one has to have a um, thorough understanding of electrical side as well as a mechanical side so so as to decide what should be the band so gen sometimes what happens um, the students they always try to reduce the band no i want to have a very constant current it is not required if it is required you reduce the band because when you reduce the band the switches are subjected to more stresses and the switching losses will increase the purpose of going for power electronic converter is to improve the efficiency of the overall system, right? So since the semiconductor device is given and since it is capable of uh, being operated at a very high frequency, just because of that, we should not simply uh, trouble the semiconductor device, all right? Now we are interested in quasi square. So you go for, uh, uh, go for, this um, uh, power electronic converter so we everywhere we have a transistor transistor with a diode connected anti-parallel so that uh, the the switch can be made as a bi-directional actually if this diode is not there then current cannot flow in the opposite direction so the diode is uh, uh, there okay so most of the um, uh, ic's that are available when you talk about igbt igbt comes along with the diode which is connected anti-parallel now i want to have a plus i current plus i means uh, now i have taken care of this uh, pack emf in this uh, winding so this a and b it corresponds to the winding one of the winding all right now the current flows uh, the transistor then a terminal a then terminal b and transistor 2 okay so this is about uh, the forward conduction and now i want a freewheeling operation because the current rises from 9.9 .9 to 10.1 then 10.1 .1 to 9.9 .9, it should be a freewheeling action so the energy stored in the load it should be dissipated within the load itself freewheeling time means what during that time the source and the winding are not coupled actually whatever energy is there in the winding that energy will be dissipated within the winding itself so during the freewheeling time the source will be decoupled from that of the winding so in the first uh, portion transistor t1 and t2 are turned on now during the fall portion freewheeling portion so how is the can you tell me the devices that are conducting or tell me how do you ensure this control is happening i want to have a 10 10 ampere 10 ampere means constant 10 ampere is not possible so it will be varying from 9.9 .9 to 10.1 10.1 to 9.9 9.9 .9 to 10.1 it is a positive current positive current in the sense current flows from the terminal a to terminal b now tell me the control one one thing i have said 9.9 .9 to 10.1 ampere i have said it is about uh, transistor t1 and t2 are turned on now 
10.1 to 9.9 ampere tell me any question here i am going fast but is there any question okay zainab yes sir any question sir if we uh, no sir if we turn on uh, turn off the switch t1 at that time current will continuously uh, flow through the t2 and d4 great man so you turn off the t1 now the current flows from current flows uh, d4 terminal a terminal b then transistor t2 okay so what it means is during positive i during this uh, period t2 is always kept in the on state t2 is always kept in the on state okay t1 is turned on whenever the current has to rise from 9.9 to 10.1 10.1 to 9.9 ampere during that time turn off t1 so t1 is turned on turned off turned on turned off why based on what by sensing the current flowing in the winding okay here i have not shown the current sensor whereas i have shown the current sensor here so current sensor is needed once again the current sensor is also based on all effect all effect principle right so um now come to minus i ampere we want to maintain the current around minus i ampere that means what current is minus 9.9 to minus 10.1 minus 10.1 to minus 9.9 okay now if the current has to change from minus 9.9 to minus 10.1 ampere what are the devices conducting 3 and 4 t3 and t4 Great. transistor 3 and transistor 4 okay now the current uh, is uh, it's a free wheeling operation now minus 10.1 to minus 9.9 ampere tell me the device t3 off great t3 off therefore t4 and t4 and d2 great so therefore it will current will flow through diode d2 b terminal a then diode uh, transistor 4 okay so uh great so understood right now what is the voltage waveform in one phase so current i have shown cos c square waveform and there is a ripple and that ripple will be based on what kind of band you are choosing in the control logic so that time if you are asked to sketch the waveform in one of the phases voltage waveform so this voltage waveform suppose if i have 100 volt here dc then it is 100 volt and it is zero minus 100 volt zero any question here mehul no sir mehul no sir no question okay no you can do like this okay okay how to inject sinusoidal current in a A coil with a fixed DC voltage source. There is no change in the power electronic converter. Can anybody explain by yourself? Okay, so that will be better if somebody explains. Anybody wants to explain? Yes, sir. As you told earlier. yeah please continue okay in positive direction of the current we will just uh, control the uh, control switching action of the t1 and uh, just uh, continuous uh, controlling of the t2, t2 okay so in in a positive direction of the current whenever free will uh, we want uh, reduce uh, we want reduce our current at that time we uh, just turn off the switch t1 and uh, at that time current will uh, flow through the d4 and uh, t2 okay so same situation for negative side negative current no 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 negative side don't explain uh, sir, positive side sir, i would like to explain 
like yes, in yes. positive direction uh, in positive direction when t1 and t2 is on then inductor is charged in in, in that time period and when uh, we close t1 then current flows through t three wheels through t2 and d4 and d4 is forward biased by uh, inductor so it will discharge so it will make sinusoidal current the same thing we have seen in the previous case there it is quasi square how it is becoming sinusoidal current see the whatever operations you have said sign up if there is no change in whatever i said earlier so the same set of operations now how 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 does that same set of operations make the uh, current as sinusoidal suddenly sir here so in previous case we yes repeat in previous case so in previous case we are using dc uh, battery and now you are we are using uh, ac source no madam no <laughs> hello See, we, we are having only battery okay so that is why i started long back is it possible to obtain variable sinusoidal current starting from a battery okay and all of you had agreed that it is yes okay now you don't change that uh, source to ac sir so i was saying back. section rle load no r back emf is always even in dc motor back emf is alternative by changing the hysteresis band great great so what i am looking for in the quasi square wave form i have maintained the reference current as 10 ampere now in sign for getting sinusoidal current i will keep changing the reference current okay so for instance if i want to show here let's say that reference current is uh 2 ampere so after some time the reference current will be 4 ampere then reference current 6 ampere reference current 8 ampere reference current 10 ampere so the band will be decided around the reference current the reference current will be changed with the time whereas in quasi square wave form the reference current is maintained as 10 ampere and the band is decided around the 10 ampere so we are not changing the source this back emf if you talk about back emf if you talk about the back emf even in this case although i have indicated as a dc but actually back emf is not going to be dc even in dc motor back emf is not dc in the equivalent circuit we put a dc but actually back emf is actually not dc yeah any question here gopal you have any question sign up is that okay yes sir okay anybody anybody has any question here okay uh, somebody said that is what i said who is that uh, who is that i forgot now sir i think me me means darshan prem no 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 not you prem prem kriti kumar yes that is what i meant prem kriti kumar kahan ho gaya prem kriti kumar oh, yes sir you you don't have mic ah yeah you yes, tell sir, me yes, sir. Yeah, so that I that I mentioned that the change in the controlling signal. So uh, if we change the controlling signal to the DC value, DC value, so it will work as a quasi square wave. And if we change the control signal to sinusoidal, then uh, it will okay. give us the. Uh, okay. You are doing what program now? You are you are doing what? M T I P H T? Are you are a faculty member? What? No, no, sir. I am a student of N I T Y. P G student. Which student? P G student. Yes, sir. 
okay so sometimes what happens you know when you go for interview you are expected that you will explain everything right if you say yeah. by controlling by change in the control signal okay so that is applicable for any topic in this uh, program by changing the control signal we will be able to achieve but you are expected yeah. to go beyond that you know you know how to do that but unless you okay. tell uh, i will not be convinced right Yes. Yeah. So, because subsequently, I'm sure that you will be trying for uh, uh, higher studies, or you will be going for some job. So, everywhere you will be expected to explain everything by yourself. So, what I was yes. expecting is, uh, uh, in case of in the previous case, I will keep the reference current constant. Whereas in this case, I yes. will keep the reference. Once the current is varying around two ampere, now I will make it four ampere. Once the current is varying around four ampere, then I will make it six ampere. Once the current is varying six ampere, then I will make it eight ampere. Then once again, I will reduce the reference six ampere. Then four ampere, two ampere. So I will keep changing the reference with the time. Okay, that is what I was expecting. But uh, whatever you said is correct by changing the control signal. But uh, you may have to add some more explanation. Okay, otherwise don't uh, mistake me that you have said and I have not appreciated you. Something like that. Yes, sir. Okay. Shall we go to next? Yes. Uh, now there is one more uh, uh, terminology. All right. Uh, so far, what I said, mechanically commutated motor. Then I moved on to. Electronically commutated motor. Now we want to have uh, one more subclass. The main topic is electronically commutated motor, but there is one more subclass, BLDC motor. What is that motor? Uh, from we have outsourced the job of commutation from a mechanical system to electronic system. Okay. Because of that, we are we were able to push the armature winding to the stator. The high power dissipating windings are the armature winding that we could push it to stator. Once we are pushing it to stator, the cooling is better. Life is getting extended. Now, um, human beings, no, we are uh, uh, usually greedy. Agreed? So we have we have we have done it. Yes. See, mal. Uh, Name I forgot. Ah, Naga Malleshwar. Naga Malleshwar proudly says, "Yes, we human beings are greedy." Proudly says, "Okay." Um, um, so we have done a great job of converting mechanical commutator to electronic commutator, rotating armature winding to a stationary armature winding. We have done a great job. B means who are that? Who, who has done this? Who has done this? Hello. Power electronics, sir. Yes, electronics done. We have written a control algorithm in laptop, so we could say that we have done it. Okay. Uh, now, uh, since we are greedy, we are going to one uh, step higher. What step? Now we want to eliminate something more. What is that? Harmonic field, field winding. Field winding we don't want to eliminate. We want to eliminate something else. Sir, sinusoidal current input. <laughs> I'll cry. <laughs> nay, something else. Brush. Nay, nay, nay. Bas, uh, bas, uh, vadgama, vadgama no, no, no. We don't want to eliminate the sensor and all. A sensor I have shown here. Something else. Yes, Vijay Shirohi says brush. Why brushes are coming? Because uh, because we have the field winding kept in the rotor. The field winding is to be energized by a DC supply. How do you give DC supply to a rotating winding? So then you require slip rings and brushes. Through brushes and slip rings, we are energizing the field winding which is sitting in the rotor. Agreed or not agreed? Now we want to eliminate the slip rings and brushes. Yes, 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 yes. Thanks, thanks. Agreed. Thanks. So we want to eliminate slip rings and uh, brushes. How do you do that? How 
how do you do that approach the prime minister by using permanent magnet. electromagnet to permanent magnet so slip rings and brushes are eliminated so now we have to give a name for this motor what name you will give permanent magnet motor permanent, permanent magnet motor darshan thanks darshan okay now anybody else pm bldc ah bldc so mostly people say it's a bldc right uh, bldc means what uh, the motor in which brushes are not there so by saying this terminology i have asked a question while naming is the credit given correctly who has done the great job what is a great job eliminate brushes they go after uh, uh, how much time i have i have spent very close to uh, 2 hours and 30 minutes okay very close to that now pe people are saying eliminating brushes is a great job what is a great job so far from since yesterday and today what is Sir, the commutator converted to electronic commutator yes man moving yes, away from right. mechanical commutator that is the great job moving away from mechanical commutator and the great job is done by electronics but at the end of the session if you all say eliminating the brushes is a great job gaya then mera job is done and i should not take the payment from professor mulla right gaya actually by the end so and the brushes are very innocent sign up do you agree brushes are innocent brushes are sitting idle and uh, you want you want current to be given to the winding which is sitting in the rotor so through brushes current flows brushes are doing nothing it is helping you so most of the time what we do we attack the innocent people right just because that person is keeping quiet maro 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 okay so you see this name brushless dc motor now we get a kind of a proud feeling you no know? brushless i have eliminated brushes right some sort of uh, when when somebody leaves an organization you no know, somebody so some many people will celebrate it oh gaya ye right uh, so something like that so similarly the main problem was the sparking that was happening in the commutator why in the commutator because you have the uh, segments which are separated by insulator what is a commutator it's not a continuously conducting cylinder you have many segments con co corresponding to the number of conductors that you will be terminating to the commutator the cylinder will be made up of many segments the segments are separated by insulator so whenever the brush is touching and after some time and the commutator segments leave then there is a current interruption okay because insulation come whenever there is a current interruption the spark is developed also there is a shift of the magnetic neutral axis with armature reaction due to the commutator due to the presence of commutator um, due to the presence of commutator there occurs a spark so we want to eliminate because we can't use the dc motor in places like mines where there is a possibility of gas leakage then there will be lead to fire explosion so the main problem is this commutator and the process of commutation so somehow after this transistor uh, inventions we are able to get rid of that and now brushes is suppose if in this case electromagnet sitting in the rotor if you want to feed the dc supply to the winding uh, then you go for a slip rings slip rings is a continuously conducting cylinder brush is touching that so when the brush is sliding over the rotating slip ring there is absolutely no problem there is no spark spark happens whenever there is a current interruption with the slip ring and brushes there is no spark if slip rings and brushes is a problem then all the power plants whether it is a thermal power plant hydro power plant or nuclear power plant everywhere we are using synchronous generator in synchronous generator field winding is in the rotor and the, the supply to that is given via slip rings and brushes 
if brushes are really a problem then brushes should not be there in the synchronous generator of thermal power plant hydro power plant nuclear plant there is absolutely no problem problem is with the commutator because commutator is not continuously conducting sec cylinder there are insulation between two consecutive segments there is a current interruption happening so uh, by the end of the session i will ask you the the same question uh, please tell uh, brushes are innocent brushes we don't want to eliminate the brushes at all we want to move away from mechanical commutator that's all we want but in all the books it's written as bldc motor bldc motor is great and all the students whether it is a mtech student or phd student they always think that permanent magnet is great permanent magnet is not great okay what is the great is electronics okay now by giving this naming like brushless dc motor actually the credit instead of giving to right person we are giving it to a wrong place actually right so when when this motor is not having brushes why are you talking about brushes do you know what i'm saying when 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 brush is not there why are you talking about brush there is something which is great sitting here in front of us and we simply dismiss it as if uh, it's taken for granted that great thing is power electronic converter okay if there is no transistor if there is no semiconductor device this brushless dc motor is impossible actually okay commutation is not possible we will have to continue with mechanical commutator so but if permanent magnet is not there in the world then still electronic commutation is possible right in fact permanent magnets we don't have strong permanent magnets we don't have strong permanent magnets are available there where where china yes i will not tell that because no in case if there is any problem i don't want to be caught now it's navin kumar ready will be caught i don't want to tell okay so uh, th th those people know they they those people means whatever navin kumar said okay i did not say anything okay because it's being recorded right so those people also put a drama right so they will say that our uh, foreign minister uh, changed their uh, decision on export policies now we cannot transport uh, we cannot export permanent magnet okay now if you go for permanent magnet permanent magnet means uh, neodymium iron boron magnet that magnet is available in abundance there so then all the vehicles no will be there everywhere okay because we are not able to change the permanent magnet with the time if there is a problem with that so uh, there is actually politics behind this naming actually um, uh, maybe rajan you can do editing uh, wherever uh, you require actually um, uh, there is a politics behind so that no all the research community uh, pg students and uh, uh, mtech and phd so they will think bldc motor means main job is done by permanent magnet so we require permanent magnet okay so actually we require power electronic converter and appropriate control without permanent magnet also we can do a very good very good we can we can get a very good motor now if that is a case where is the role played by permanent magnet in what situations we have to go for permanent magnets we should not be blind all the time we have we require a permanent magnet motor we should not in what situation we have to go for permanent magnet the same class of motor electronically commutated motor replace the electromagnet by permanent magnet in what situation there are situations but in what situation two wheeler four wheeler in what situation low power applications separate power supply not available for electromagnet okay no uh, we have power supply we can have a battery right when we can have a battery for armature winding we can have a battery for this also right uh, yeah sign up says two wheeler and one more person said two wheeler uh, when we need small machines uh, can you uh, can you correct it little bit it's Sir, not we... small machines Sir, when we want the size of machine to be small. Great man, who is that? Shivam. Yes, sir. Yes, 
when you look for high energy density okay high energy density means what the space is told this is the space and in that space you have to put this motor okay the space constraint is there whenever there is a space constraint you have to you have to increase the energy density of the motor increasing the energy density in the sense small machine delivering more power okay especially two wheeler many people have already said two wheeler but the reasoning you have to say to have higher energy density we have to go for permanent magnet motor if higher energy density is not a requirement don't go for permanent magnet for instance four wheeler it's not a requirement at all okay we have a space and also people say by having by reducing the size weight of the machine comes down all right suppose if uh, electromagnet based uh, electronically commutated motor if it is a uh, 20 kg with permanent magnet if you are able to get 12 kg some 8 kg reduction yes when there is a reduction in the weight and when this machine is sitting there now for every charging the distance range gets improved agreed right now the question is two persons are sitting on the vehicle each person weighs 80 kg 60 kg right so instead of looking for reduction in the machine weight we can think of reducing our weight also a great instead of doing so much research instead of struggling to get the permanent magnets import and uh, that uh, cross border discussion instead of doing all that we can do some diet and physical exercise reduce the weight by 10 kg right now we can work with the electromagnet and we need not talk about other country we need not be dependent on some other country all right uh, uh, so and one more great advantage of eliminating permanent magnet is uh, permanent magnet initially it's fine but with the time when the steady state temperature inside the machine keeps on increasing the thermal shock is there with the time the property of permanent magnet uh, degrades okay and whenever there is a short circuit problem then the windings will carry huge current when the windings carry more current it produces more magnetic field now that magnetic field is going to oppose the magnetic field that's coming out of the magnet so there is a high possibility of demagnetization once the magnets are demagnetized it's not like all the time it's going to be elastic so within that range if it is disturbed and if it is regaining its original magnetism slightly reduced magnet it's fine but sometimes it's going to be a permanent demagnetization why permanent demagnetization if the magnet is there now you are having a constant opposing magnetic field and for what duration this opposing magnetic field this magnet is facing based on that duration this magnet can become plastic plastic in the sense it will lose its magnetism fully if it is losing its magnetism then it's not a permanent magnet you have to remove you have to throw it so removing and throwing saying that no it is easy but once it comes in the machine you disassemble the machine and you will have to handle it properly you will have to remove the magnet and you have to look for magnet and it's it, it looks like simple okay take on the rotor you just stick it's not like that it's a very only the trained personnel can do this job okay so uh, uh, and sometimes what happens so no, whenever you want to carry out maintenance operation if it is an electromagnet you will switch off the winding and the winding also will have some remnant uh, residual flux density in the machine so you can do some short circuiting and finally you can ensure that the system is free from residual flux and you can comfortably work but when there are magnets are sitting now you want to do some maintenance activity in the stator winding for instance right now you will carry some uh, some um, iron right whatever instrument you are carrying so there is a high possibility that it will be uh, getting attracted not only that the the functioning of all these devices uh, will get altered there is a malfunctioning of suppose if you want to do some measurement with with the ab permanent magnet nearby that will malfunction actually 
whether you have noticed somewhere that I don't know. Even TV, no. Uh, very close to TV, if you keep uh, some um, strong uh, permanent magnet, that uh, LCD, that display and all will get uh, damaged. So in, a, in your home, you ensure that you are not keeping strong permanent magnet close to uh, electronic appliances, all this TV, no. So you, you take care of that aspect. So uh, by having permanent magnet where you don't have any control on the flux coming out of that, uh, it's not uh, um, safe. I don't recommend. If space constraint is a problem and there is no other go, you are looking for higher energy density motor to be installed there. So you go for per PM. All the time you don't think of PM. In short, all the time you don't look for brushless DC motor. You look for electronically commutated motor, that is the best. But don't look for brushless DC motor. Is that agreed? Okay, great. So while naming is the credit given correctly, obviously not given correctly. Uh, we are by having the name BLDC motor, we are forgetting electronically commutated motor, which I proved even in this session. Um, uh, somebody said, what is the great thing that we have done? Eliminating the brushes, right? So, so remember that brushless DC motor is not at all required. Agreed? So it, it, it will be good if all of you work with uh, power electronic converter and uh, think about very good uh, control algorithm and try to uh, minimize the coding, try to make it a user friendly um, and don't aim again eliminating the sensor in the first place, eliminating the sensor, keep it at the last point because accurate position sensing is needed if you are looking for high performance drive. Okay, especially during this time of starting. During the time of starting, if you are not very careful, there is a possibility of high current flowing and all the semiconductor devices can be spoiled also. Okay, if you look up, if you see the bindings, bindings are robust, there is no problem. But uh, since electronics and electrical both are together, so you should ensure that the transient currents are limited in magnitude so that is possible if you have current sensor and position sensor current sensing of course you have to do position sensing uh, elimination is not a big thing i don't know why people are uh, focusing on that that's not required in the beginning stage any questions Okay, now we will go to the next one. Uh, so whatever I've said, thank you questions. This was planned for yesterday. Uh, now this is planned for today. Uh, uh, I don't know, Rajan is staring at me. Uh, this is planned for today. Uh, how much time you will take? I don't know, whatever time you are giving, that time I will take. So you will have to tell me two minutes before stop. I will stop there. Okay, wherever, whichever slide we are. Now tell me this uh, uh, characteristic. What is in y-axis question mark on y-axis? Torque and power. No, no. X-axis is speed. Y-axis is one quantity. What is that one quantity? Uh, sign up. You don't give me options. Torque and power. You choose the best. Not like that. You have to give me one. Torque. So torque versus torque. Speed. It is torque. Torque versus speed. Which motor it is? Okay, okay, okay. Everybody said torque. Okay. Which motor it is? Induction motor. So is it uh, torque speed characteristic of induction motor? Many people are saying induction motor. Therefore, can I say it's a torque speed characteristic of induction motor? Next question now. Is it the top? No. Vijay, why you said the top? Now only you people said torque and then you said induction motor. Now you, your answers only I'm merging and I'm asking that question for that. No, that's a contradiction, right? 
first question you said torque second question you said induction motor third question the same thing i combined is it the torque speed characteristic of induction motor now it is no so should i start from the beginning okay what is there in the y axis it is a maximum torque great man so it is not torque okay navin kumar right yes sir yes sir navin kumar did not say in the first place the reason is they go let let them do mistakes i will come as a hero and i will correct the mistake and i will take the more credit is it like that navin kumar no, navin sir. kumar, navin no, kumar sir. what you are doing i am research scholar sir where jnt hyderabad sir. jnt so in the very first place you know it is a torque maximum no sir later uh, uh, oh, just, uh, Okay. So, so, so you are innocent. Okay, it's not like uh, you had a master plan of establishing that all these people are wrong. Now I will establish how, about Hyderabad something like that. Okay, fine. No, no, so, so it is T max. It is not torque. So there is a difference between T and T max. Now, can anybody say what is the difference between T and T max? When I say T, T means it is a torque developed by the motor corresponding to certain load. T max is the torque that can be developed by the machine, but it is not the torque developed by the machine. That torque that can be developed by the machine. Suppose if I take a student, the student can do five courses in a or six courses in a semester, right? Sometimes the student does only two courses. Six courses is the capability, but two courses the student does due to some reason. right two courses is not the capability six courses is the capability right so similarly when i say torque is constant torque cannot be constant torque depends on what is the load connected so up to base speed the motor is capable of producing a maximum torque let me give some number this horizontal line corresponds to 20 newton meter let me give a number so as to explain okay that means up to base speed let me take a base speed as 1000 rpm up to 1000 rpm for instance 500 rpm what is the maximum torque that the machine can produce 20 newton meter 100 rpm 20 newton meter right and this is a very general characteristic applicable for any machine it's not connected with induction motor alone any machine up to base speed you can achieve a maximum torque of 20 newton meter but what is the torque developed by the motor torque developed by the motor is connected with the load if the load demands 4 newton meter it will develop 4 newton meter there is always a balance between what is needed what is delivered when the load demands 4 newton meter motor will not develop 20 newton meter okay if we say it's a torque speed characteristic of the motor why the motor is delivering all the time 20 newton meter right so it it is not the torque speed characteristic please remember that motor capability that's why i have written the torque capability of motor but after the speed of 1000 rpm the motor cannot produce 20 newton meter it's a very simple question don't think too much technically can anybody give the reason why the motor is not capable of producing 20 newton meter after 1000 rpm power issue haan ji hello yes shivam says because of decrease in flux okay yeah i know saturation and all we are not considering we are doing field weakening beyond 1000 rpm okay when you are doing field weakening now you see the right expression for torque torque is equal to k phi i right machine design constant flux multiplied by current for going to a operating point beyond base speed we will be reducing the flux once the flux is reduced then torque is equal to k phi i the current can be the rated current in the winding therefore Torque capability decreases. Agreed. Okay. Now we we are talking about vehicle. No, no. Power becomes constant. Don't say. 
uh, because the out uh, we are reducing the flux the winding can be given constant uh, current maximum current therefore the maximum torque decreases so how does the machine know that i have to maintain the power as constant right so we have to uh, speak something logical otherwise you say we have reduced the flux since the torque produced by any machine is the team effort between magnetic flux and electric current electric current if it is a 50 ampere machine 50 ampere still we can inject but we have reduced the flux by 10 percent 90 percent only is there therefore maximum torque reduces so still if you want to go for very high speed then you are reducing the flux by another 10 percent now the flux is only 80 percent but the winding can still carry 50 ampere so therefore maximum torque at the higher speed keeps on decreasing because of reduction in flux. Torque decreases, speed increases, so the product is nearly constant. Okay, therefore we say the P max, it's not constant power, it's a P max, maximum power is constant, but there is no guarantee that power has to be constant in this region. It's all connected with the machine design. Torque decreases, speed increases. But you cannot expect the decrease in torque by what rate it decreases the same way the speed increases. There is no such formula under. So this product is nearly a constant. Okay. Therefore, we are going for some approximate uh, terminology, constant power region like that. But there is no guarantee that it has to be satisfied. Now, I want to vary the because since this uh, motor i want to put it in a vehicle i want to vary the do the speed control somewhere below base speed so once again i start with the separately excited dc motor then eventually we will go to electronically commutated motor how do we do this control below base speed i want to go from 1000 rpm i said base speed i want to move from 300 rpm to 400 rpm how do i do that There are two quantities, one is a current and another one is the flux. So current, armature current or armature winding, flux, field current, field winding. Now tell me which one you will disturb. Current. Armature current. Why, why not field? Field, field is kept constant. Why? That's what I'm asking, why? Sir, if we keep uh, flux constant and uh, reduce armature current, uh, armature copper losses will be less and efficiency will be high. Great, great. So uh, the torque is the team effort between field current and armature current, flux and armature. So all the time we want to extract maximum from magnetic field, whatever is maximum. So if the flux or flux density is more, then the burden on the current comes down. Okay. So therefore, I square R losses comes down. So the efficiency will be better. In all applications, we want to ensure that the burden on the current is less. So if you talk about high voltage transmission, once the voltage is developed in the generator, instead of simply transmitting, we go for step up transformer, step the voltage to very high level because the power is the team effort between voltage and current give the burden to voltage therefore the burden on the current for the same amount of power transmission burden on the current comes down once the burden on the current comes down the transmission line losses also come down so in all applications we want to minimize the burden on the current the left hand side we have kept the same because we want this much power we want this much torque so that we cannot change because the load demands so left hand side is same but the right hand side there are two quantities in one case power system B and I we have in here in rotating machines and transformers we have flux and current we have so there you give the you extract as much as possible from voltage here you try to extract as much as possible from the magnetic field all right so keep the flux constant here and uh, play with the armature circuit current or vary the armature voltage right low to high speed now you come to the uh speed control beyond base speed okay in this region i want to go from 1200 rpm rpm to 1400 rpm 
so you have to reduce the flux right by doing the flux weakening we will be able to move above move beyond base speed we can do above base speed so little bit of uh, introduction i gave uh, it is for the people who uh, are not able to follow why there is a reduction in flux causes and increase in speed okay now operating point this p1 corresponds to operating point p1 and operating point 2 now as soon as you now i want to go to a beyond base speed so i am trying to reduce the flux from the rated value so the flux is reduced from 51 flux is reduced from 51 to 52 okay so in the steady state it will come to the point 2 but during the time of transients what is happening as soon as you do the reduction in flux what is happening first equation is back emf back emf is equal to k flux into omega omega was whatever was the speed corresponding to the point one since it is a mechanical side you have reduced the flux now the speed cannot change immediately so therefore i have taken omega one if there is any question at any stage you please interrupt but the flux you have reduced so therefore i can say back emf back emf momentarily drops to a value decided by flux to and the previous speed right now current is equal to terminal voltage minus back emf divided by the resistance terminal voltage minus back emf is k phi to omega one since uh, this back emf is a lesser value therefore the current is whatever current you get that current is greater than and next is torque torque is k phi i flux you have reduced current it has increased by itself because of this equation now what will happen to torque suddenly students say that torque will be constant no reduction in flux you see the percentage increase in current see the percentage the percentage of increase in current is more that i have symbolically indicated by two arrow mark which is going up that means increase in is current is more than the decrease in flux as a result of which torque is more now corresponding to the point a okay this point a Torque minus TL, you have not changed the load, you want to go at a higher speed. Since the torque that is developed by the machine now, at this instant, it's we are talking about transients, at this instant is uh, more than the load torque positive, therefore acceleration is happening and uh, speed increases. Okay, do you follow what I'm saying? Okay, now the speed increases. Now you have to go to for a loop. It's actually like a far loop, no, that iteration. Uh, finally it will converge right so that now you have, go, you have to go back to the uh, first equation now uh, speed increases now you will put some speed here but the flux phi 2 will be the same because you have reduced the flux and uh, after that you are not disturbing the flux now again you go back to this equation omega increases now compared to omega 1 now whatever omega you have got here at this step uh, that uh, omega has increased so now the point will be b so the back emf slightly tries to increase now and finally um, after uh, some sequence of operations some iterations it finally comes to the point p p2 at which uh, at which t minus tl becomes zero t minus tl becomes zero that means that machine develops a torque which is equal to the torque demanded by the load then no more acceleration or deceleration and the motor continues to rotate at an increased speed the speed is greater compared to the speed at which you were at point p1 any question here finally motor settles at a speed omega 2 which is greater than omega 1 such that t2 minus tl equal to 0 d omega by dt equal to 0 now t2 is uh, greater than t1 okay now you, what will be the corresponding current now current is equal to b minus k phi 2 omega 2 now omega 2 is the steady state speed do you follow what i'm saying omega 2 is the steady state speed therefore uh, this current i2 is greater than i1 clear 
Any question here? This T2 greater than T1, you please uh, 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 strike off. Okay. T2 minus TL is 0. So T2 greater than T1, you strike off. If this is confusing, you strike off. What you should remember is by doing the reduction in flux, reduction in flux, what was the current in the operating point P1? That is I1. Now the current corresponding to the operating point P2 is I2, where I2 is greater than I1. Because we want to have the same amount of torque to be developed. So K51 I1 equal to K52 I2. Phi2 is less than Phi1. Therefore, I2 should be greater than I1. Okay. So now you please strike off this. This is confusing. This is for a vehicle application. So this T2 greater than T1, you cancel it. You assume T2 is equal to T1. Any question? Boring. So uh, people who, whom I could see, I could understand that it is not boring because uh, uh, they are able to manage their face such that the other person doesn't know uh, it's boring or not. But what about other people who are behind uh, the profile picture? Profile picture is very nice, right? But what is behind that, I don't know. Pragnesh, why you have disabled the video? OK, since it is very close to the end, uh, could you please enable the video, all of you? Because I want to see once. That's it. Because it's very close to the end, you know? Other people, yes, thank you. See, there also you are wearing masks, so I'm not able to see you actually. See, then finally we'll put the blame on Modi. Modi says wear mask, right? So I'm I'm wearing mask. See, you your target is not to reveal your face. Hana, not to reveal your face. Okay, the question now, uh, is it possible to reduce the air gap flux in PM motor? Flux is coming out of uh, permanent magnet. We have changed electromagnet to permanent magnet. Is it possible to reduce the flux? Two options are given, yes, no. Shivam says, maybe no. Naga Malleshwara says, no. Sign up says, no. Um, Rajan says, yes. Pragnesh says, yes. So no people that uh, strength is more. Majority is no people. So they are going to win, I think. Anna? Is it is it so? Navin Kumar says yes. Yes, you are saying what? Majority is no people. For that, you are saying yes. Or you are saying that uh, reduction in air gap flux is possible. For that, you are saying yes. Answer, sir. Answer for the question. Okay, answer for that. Yes. Again, Navin Kumar waited what people are saying, where the crowd is going. Okay. So let them go and. Uh, uh, Naga Maleshwara says need reasoning for yes. Oh, Na okay, Naga he is asking to Navin Kumar, why do you say yes? I want a reason. Why can't you ask directly? Why there is a kind of a medium? No, that sir, I it's not from Navin Kumar. It is from yes people, yes, who answered for this question. Uh, 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 Navin said yes. Uh, Rajan said yes. Pragnesh said yes. You ask, okay, this question is to those people actually who said yes. I am not saying anything. I am asking question. Hello, yes, people. Darshan, yes, what you said? Darshan, what you said? Darshan, what you said? No, you your uh, microphone is sir. muted. Sorry, sir. Uh, sir, uh, uh, repeat once again question. Question, I need not repeat. It is there. You yeah, yeah, but sir, uh, samaj me nahi aaya. Uh, 
it is possible oh. to reduce air gap flux in oh. permanent oh. mode oh. i have to improve my english uh, that's what you, my written english i have to improve okay wait 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 see the flux is coming from the field which is sitting in the rotor the field could be electromagnet or permanent magnet if it is an electromagnet you see the second diagram where uh, there is a coil and you are having a battery the battery we cannot connect directly we will connect through slip rings and brushes all that i am not showing now you can vary this current right simple one is you can include a rheostat you can put a rheostat in parallel and you can vary that simple but it is not efficient so you go for electronics based so that we have seen how to vary the current in a coil with the help of a semiconductor devices that we have seen so we can vary the current once you vary the current the intensity of the magnetic field established by the electromagnet also will vary that means flux we are able to control with electromagnet agreed up to now okay great now we are uh, we are wanting to move away from slip rings and brushes we want to put a permanent magnet because no we want to go for a uh, high energy density application like two wheeler because there is a space constraint so electromagnet is replaced by permanent magnet once you put a permanent magnet of this much thickness say for example 5 mm 5 mm you have put already so mag flux coming out of the magnet is already fixed now we want to reduce the flux why we want to reduce the flux because we want uh, about the base speed we want to go in the highway no we want to go very fast so the basically yeah. the the basically the vehicle is designed for 50 km per hour that nominal speed so if you go at 50 km per hour then the mileage will be better but the uh, highway ekdam free right and now even a very disciplined person once the person is sitting in the highway they cross 100 km per hour they may see the um, uh, speed limit as 80 km per hour but they may try to go at 120 140 km per hour the person is very disciplined normally no looks very nice but somehow no tempted very um, because everybody is going fast then the person says the explanation wo ja raha hai sir right so isliye mai bhi ja raha hu right so that kind of uh, explanation so everybody is tempted so that time you have to do flux weakening right now we have already put a permanent magnet even if it is a two wheeler we have put a permanent magnet but now we are crossing our speed limit uh, so how do we achieve flux weakening with the permanent magnet so the question is um, question is is it possible to do flux weakening with pm now nagamalleshwar rao thinks he looks at the ceiling like that sir the resultant flux can be reduced sir uh how do you do that the resultant flux can be reduced by uh, controlling the armature flux great so now flux coming out of the magnet is constant all right okay. now you have another person that person can be excited okay that person can be excited in such a way dash 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 fill up the blanks the other person can be excited such that now darshan will complete it such that dash the armature flux uh, design such that uh, uh, total total uh, i can total flux will be the armature winding can be excited such yeah. that such that dash please fill up the blank rated yeah, flux yeah. will be uh, lower than uh, great great such that it opposes the magnet flux coming out of the magnet all right no okay great now uh, what is the basic requirement for this to happen whether it is a transformer or rotating machine all these are two electrical circuits that are magnetically coupled right now if you want to influence the air gap flux by exciting an armature winding which is sitting in the stator so what is the requirement if anybody says the requirement correctly okay 
that person will be given um, chocolate by Rajan because you no know, Rajan is uh, part of the organizing uh, institute. So Rajan will take care of giving the uh, uh, chocolate. How he will give all that I don't know. Online chocolate. Maybe he will show so many chocolates pictures. So for that we need rotor position. Uh, no, nice, something else. Uh, what I'm saying. Um, uh, what is the basic requirement of influencing the air gap flux because we want to reduce by energizing the set of windings which is sitting in the stator so what is required it's difficult uh, but even then i'm asking sir uh, uh, by increasing the angle between the armature M mmf and field mmf so by doing that how do you reduce the flux Resultant uh, MMF will be, I think, uh, it will be reduced by changing the power factor, sir. You are dif you are uh, uh, saying differently, but you are approaching something. But you are you are but but it, it that is not the answer I am looking for. Um, leading lagging currents, leading current, lagging current. Great. Something you are going, you are approaching. Um, yes. Maybe we will get that answer quickly. Um, okay. Um, so this one is not required. This is also not required. I will quickly go to uh, yes. Uh, Okay, so what I'm saying is when you are trying to oppose the flux, uh, then the inductance has to be more because these are our two electrical circuits which are magnetically coupled. If the magnetic coupling is good, you can you can think of influencing something by energizing the other winding. Do you follow what I'm saying? If there is a connection between you and me is not good. Whatever I say, it is not going to reach. Agreed? Right? If the connection is good, even if I tell something, you may listen. Right? The same story is applicable here. Magnet is sitting in the rotor. Now flux is coming. Now I want to reduce that by energizing. So this is producing flux. But if the coupling is very weak, you do anything here in the state, you will not be able to achieve flux weakening. Okay, so there are some permanent magnet machines where you can't think of flux weakening because the inductance is less. Inductance of the complete electromagnetic system. What is that inductance? That is called direct axis inductance. So there are uh, two terminology: direct axis and quadrature axis inductance. So along the field axis. Along that axis, what is the inductance often? So inductance is not going to be constant around the circumference, right? Although when we take a winding, the, we take uh, the winding is represented by resistance and inductance. But when you have the, when you place all these conductors in the machine, and if you measure an LCR meter, and if you rotate the rotor, and the inductance, the, it is going to vary with the time, vary with the position, it's going to change. So inductance is not going to be constant. Right. So when the magnet we have from the magnet flux is coming and you want the flux to be opposed by one more flux in the opposite direction. So that is called direct axis flux. You want to minimize the direct axis flux. Do you follow what I'm saying? For minimizing the direct axis flux, what is the reluctance offered in the direct axis? Because reluctance offered around the circumference is going to be different. But we are not worried about the reluctance at all the other position. Whichever axis flux is coming, that axis we want the reluctance to be to be dashed. Along that axis, we want the reluctance to be dashed. More. Okay. I'll cry. We want the reluctance to be less because inductance we want it to be more. If the rel reluctance and inductance are inversely proportional. So if the reluctance is less, inductance is more. If the inductance is more, 
by exciting the armature winding by certain magnitude of current you will be able to do some reduction if the inductance is very less now uh, what is the time rajan up to what time sir uh, rajan your voice is mute okay ha ah, okay sir uh complete this topic sir complete this topic okay i may require half an hour uh, okay, okay sir, what, like, what i will, will do i will give session, a brief, okay. i will give briefing all right okay, okay. sir okay okay sir. now now you please see this diagram uh there is a uh, lambda m lambda m stands for the flux linkage in the stator coil which is due to magnet alone the subscript m stands for flux linkage due to the magnet alone now we have the induced emf in the stator coil so the angle between the emf induced in the stator coil and the lambda m is 90 degree is there any question here e is equal to d lambda by dt because there is a derivative operation so 90 degree so in time domain if we say derivation differentiation so in phasor diagram you will you can maintain as 90 degree okay up to this is clear okay i'll go back to the previous one uh this is for below base speed operation below base speed means you don't want to oppose the magnet flux agree okay so that time you want i am taking a sinusoidal uh, vacuum of motor so back emf and the current are in phase this is just for one phase now phase b phase c there will be a shifted by 120 degree we are not interested we will just talk about one phase and the same thing we will uh, extend to other phases also now if i draw the flux linkage due to magnet alone and the emf induced the current is in phase with the induced emf you will get uh, maximum dark here because these two are decoupled once the flux linkage and the, the current are quadrature to each other this current the increase in current is not going to influence anything because no it is neither aiding nor opposing because it is quadrature so influence will not be there whenever you make angle between two quantities as 90 degree that is called decoupled system one the change of one quantity is not going to influence the other quantity all right now i want to produce one more flux linkage that flux linkage which will be exactly opposite to lambda m then effectively the flux linkage comes down flux linkage comes down means it's equivalent to that resultant flux comes down so in what how do i make that what should be the current location with respect to the emf what should be the current location should it be in phase or should it be out of phase out of the phase out of phase should it be lagging or should it be leading it will be lagging okay okay yes so see if you put a if you put a ia like this you are you are able to see what our cursor i'm showing if you are putting ia here then the projection of ia will be aiding the lambda m we don't want to increase the flux we want to decrease the flux so it has to, so we have to inject the winding so it has to, so we have to inject the winding such that you will see the back m of a form and you will not give in phase current you will give a leading current okay so ia is leading than that of ea now you make two components one component the projection of ia on ea axis which is i1 it is called working component or torque producing current component then projection of ia on vertical axis which is i2 so this i2 is opposing lambda m so whenever you do addition subtraction no all that you have to ensure that both the quantities are identical you can't subtract i2 from lambda m both should be of lambda so the effective flux linkage is lambda m minus 
lambda a where lambda a is due to i2 what is the connection between lambda a and i2 is lambda a is ld into i2 actually it is inductance multiplied by current is the flux linkage so that inductance is called direct axis inductance because we don't want since i said when i rotate the rotor the inductance is going to be different at a different position for the 360 degree inductance is going to change we are not worried about all that inductance when the magnet flux is coming straight like this along that axis what is the inductance okay that inductance we are very particular that is called direct axis inductance we want higher value of direct axis inductance if you don't have higher value of direct axis inductance what happens what you see this we have decided lambda a should be 10 percent of lambda m so that the effective flux will be 90 percent right so if the left hand side we have already fixed we want to reduce the flux by 10 percent lambda a therefore the right hand side is a team effort between inductance and the current suppose if the magnetic coupling between the stator electric circuit and the rotor's electric circuit if it is a weak if it is a low uh, coupling that means inductance is less we have already designed the machine then in that case what happened to get the same left hand side the current has to be very high right current has to be very high it's not a desired operation anytime so all the time we have to minimize the current once you minimize the current, then only the losses will be less and it is going to be an efficient operation. Just for flux weakening, having a huge amount of current, that current I2 is huge, whereas I1 is corresponding to the torque producing current component. So torque producing current component means what? It's all active power. You have the electrical power, electrical power gets converted into mechanical power. We want that. But for the current I2 to be large means in the y-axis this i2 to be very large do you follow what i'm saying so that means you have fixed i1 but i2 to be very large therefore ia will be leading ea by a huge angle that means a kind of a leading reactive power uh, load so um, and it is for just for flux reduction so it is not a desired operation so the best one is you design the machine such that direct axis inductance is more so that with a reasonable amount of current with a small amount of current passed in the armature winding you will be able to reduce the air gap flux any question no sir yeah i will stop here um, uh, because i need uh, more time i will stop here so the people who are interested in machine design you if you want flux weakening operation you have to design the machine such that direct tax inductance is more otherwise it's not a proper machine and this direct tax inductance more it is meant for vehicle application if it's not a vehicle application for example some pumping uh, application you need not worry about uh, direct tax here the base speed you will keep it around 50 kilometers per hour and you want to go up to 150 so the maximum speed by the base speed should be around the three right so for getting the three the direct axis inductance to be a uh, huge to be more then only you will be able to but having inductance more you will have see nothing comes freely when you want you want to reach the destination in a short time so for which you are going for high speed because the road is exam free but when you are having higher inductance whenever you add more inductance then the system because becomes sluggish in nature sluggish means what you will give a command the system will respond after some time so in the highway uh, i have accelerated i am giving the throttle but after 10 seconds it is reaching the final speed it is okay actually because we are traveling for half an hour one hour this 10 seconds is not a mad problem but when you talk about uh, uh, city driving uh, the frequent speed reduction so you are uh, mostly youth is bothered about the pickup right so when the pickup will be very poor when the inductance is more right so this uh, vehicle business it's not just uh, battery people talk no there has to be developments in the 
battery technology and there has to be a proper motor and everywhere charging station to be there actually it is a more complicated than this youth wants to impress somebody right so the pickup has to be more but now uh, if the pickup is more and if you put inductance because the same youth wants to go very high speed in highway so that means inductance to be high so if the inductance is to be high then the vehicle cannot be used in city because you no know, that acceleration will be uh, poor so there is a huge requirements so as a result of which it's very difficult to uh, uh, promote the uh, business actually very difficult actually most of the researchers they focus on machine design uh, battery technology this that but they have to focus on understanding the psychology of uh, our people right it's uh, it's a technology come uh, humanities component so that is why in iit gandhinagar we have more humanities component uh, added in our curriculum okay so um, that's it i am stopping here any questions thank you sir okay. okay i understand that there are no questions because all of you are feeling hungry uh, so we will uh, if i continue further that hungry becomes angry so i will i will stop here oh shivam is having question yeah you can mail uh, yes already uh, nicely gently written can i mail you yeah please mail me thank you sir thank okay. you sir thank you we had a great lecture from you sir and uh, today we learned about many concepts like uh, why we gave name uh, bldc motor rather than electronically competent motor torque capability of motors and many things we learned and field weakening why the ld should be more thank you sir thank you so much for the valuable session sir and you took most of the time but it is no more interesting for us so even i forgot the recording also from the beginning yes sir thank you sir thank you so much sir. okay thank you bye thank you thank you thank you sir bye sir. yeah now the time is uh, around 140 thank so you. come back by 210 or 215 so the demo session will start at 215 so uh, rejoin at 215 thank you thank, thank you sir thank you sir thank you bye वन फिफ्टीन ना पता हूँ मुझे वन फोर्टी करेंगे तो तरफ